All right, guys, so today I'm going to make a video that probably won't get as many views and it might not impact as many lives as the Blade HQ video did. But today I thought I would do a genuine, honest to God, rescue knife buyer's guide. So the first one that I wanted to go over, and I think in my mind, one of the best rescue knives out there, and I think it's one of the best because of its features, but also this is a really unknown knife. Like this thing, if you show this, like as I'm showing this, most people probably Probably won't know what this is like immediately most knife guys will be like okay that's an emerson right and that is true this is an emerson but this particular model is called the nsar and the nsar stands for navy search and rescue and this knife was built off of another knife we'll talk about in this list but this in particular for me is one of my favorite rescue like actual ems slash rescue knives out there and i think that it's my favorite for a few reasons. First off, I really love the curvature of this blade. It makes it super easy and super useful, as I've talked about in other videos. When you're running this along the skin, having that curvature not only helps you do that, but you can also slightly angle this thing back and really see where that tip is. Now, the tip is blunt, so you're not going to like poke anyone with this, but what's nice is you can slightly set this back and you can see where that tip is. So if you're moving this inside of clothing where you may not be able to visualize that tip. It's nice to be able to visualize it because you may be working around things like GSWs, which are gunshot wounds. And so it's nice to be able to not stick this into a gunshot wound or something like that, right? If you're trying to like zip close off, that's a really handy feature. In addition to that too, the other thing that I really like about this is the integral seat belt slash strap cutter. So this isn't an individual tool that uh, comes off like the triage. This is built into the blade. And what I love about this um, belt cutter or strap cutter is this is stupidly sharp. So many belt cutter, strap cutters, gut hooks, whatever, are really like a, a, a nod, like they try to be that, but this thing is very sharp. You can even see where they've come in on the back and slightly touch this up to make sure that that edge is at a zero degree angle. So when you're actually moving this through, and I have cut stuff with this before, uh, this thing zips through straps and actual like things. So this is a very, very useful feature. In addition to uh, what I like is that this does have serrations. Now, I, like I've said in the past, I'm not a huge fan of serrations for individual, you know, like knives for EDC. But when we're talking about cutting fibrous materials, once again, straps, ropes, things that might be entrapping or entangling a human, it's nice to have serrations because serrations will invariably go through those things very fast. So those are the big reasons why I like the NSAR. I also like the fact that it does have the wave feature. Another cool thing that a lot of people don't talk about is this guy up here. It's not official and it's not like the best, but with like a little bit of wrist flick, you can actually use this as like a flipper pretty reliably. Um, so I really like this. So if you're coming up on a scene or you're needing to deploy this rapidly for whatever reason, you can just get your thumb up onto these jimpings right here and just flip it open, right? So it works very well. Um, I love it. The handle on this thing is very big, easy to use with gloves. So for me, I have to say, this is one of my favorite rescue knives, EMS knives, and they're not super known about, but the NSAR by Emerson is one of my favorites. Now, the next one, and one that I've carried a ton, is the Leatherman Raptors. Now, these I kind of didn't want to include on this list because they aren't really like a rescue knife, but they are close enough to the same gist. Like the same people that would use the NSAR would also use these. So these are, of course, medical shears made by Leatherman. What I like is they're thick, they're robust, which is not perfect for every situation. I do prefer X shears if I'm just straight up using medical shears. X shears tend to be better, um, but the Leatherman Raptors are very robust, very hardy. You can cut through some thick materials, and while it may not initially appear like it, these things are stupidly sharp. In addition, something that I like about these uh, Leatherman Raptors that are actually not on a lot of trauma shears is the fact that this lower tooth or this lower blade, I guess, you could call it. It's not super sharp, but hopefully this comes up on the camera. There's a lot of like 
texturing here. So what that means is when you're grabbing things like clothing, ace bandages, really anything, this helps grab the material that you're trying to cut and locks that material in so that as you move your blade towards it, it's not shifting around or moving. So it's not the best when it comes to like cutting wires and stuff, which unfortunately a lot of EDC tubers do that. But like for actual medical applications, the Leatherman Raptors are super hard to beat. In addition to that too, something that I don't see often talked about but something that I personally use a lot is the oxygen wrench. Oxygen is super super important in the medical environment because once we can get someone semi-stable like oxygen is really handy and it's nice so having an oxygen wrench like a genuine oxygen wrench is nice. Now don't get me wrong a lot of times at least in my environment like each oxygen tank will usually have an oxygen wrench nearby and I think that's like what we strive for, but at the same time too, if you can't find an oxygen wrench and you need to get someone on oxygen, it's nice to just have an oxygen wrench there. And so this thing can even be used, oftentimes how I'll use it is I'll like pull this out of my pocket or wherever, kind of hold it in my palm like this, set it down on the oxygen tank over this oxygen wrench here, and you can just crank on it really well. So super ergonomic, you do not need it in the open or extended position like this. Um, it might make it slightly easier, but you can just set this and palm open um, oxygen. So anyway, super useful. It is something that I do and uh, I do use this uh, tool for that quite a bit. So anyways, lastly, you do have the uh, strap or seatbelt cutter. Once again, it's not as sharp as the NSAR. So this one is fairly sharp, but it's not as sharp as the NSAR for sure. Um, but it will get the job done. In addition to, there is the kind of nifty feature on these that they don't really talk about too much, but there's this ring cutter back here. I don't know what use that's going to be. I've never encountered a situation where that's come up to be necessary. I'm sure someone in the comments will sound off. It's a cool feature. Nice to have. Um, I've never seen any applicable use of it. All right, going back to the NSAR a little bit is going to be my number third place is the Emerson SARC or S-A-R-K, which stands for search and rescue knife. Now the SARC is the grandfather or maybe just the predecessor to the NSAR. So it basically is the NSAR minus the um, very large or just overall very built-in um, strap cutter. So I believe it also is straight bladed. It doesn't have the serrations. Could be wrong on that one, but I know it doesn't have the seat belt cutter. So the Emerson Sark, which I'll try to throw a picture up in here for, is the next one. Once again, I don't have one here to show, but the NSAR and the Sark both use the same handle, the same blade uh, material and shape. So they're very similar blades, but that would probably be my third place just because I already like the NSAR a lot. And I think the Sark would be a really good one as well. <clears throat> All right, the next one up, and once again, I do not have these ones to show, but the next one up is going to be the Benchmade Triage. Now, one thing that is not often mentioned, this does also come in an auto variant, and it also comes in a sheep's footed blade. So some of them are blunt tipped, um, like they just straight up don't have a tip, and others are more like sheep's footed blades. So depending on your application, the triage can be a very useful blade. I like it, but I don't like it more than this guy. And the biggest disadvantage that I have with the um, triage is that it does have a safety belt cutter, strap cutter, but it's a separate piece that you have to use. So some people might like that because you don't have to expose your knife blade. But for me, I like having the functionality to immediately just be able to whip this guy out, right? And uh, like flip the blade around in my hand, super comfortable, super ergonomic, and just hit a uh, strap and cut it if need be. So I like that more, but uh, the triage is a venerable option. It's been around for a long time and it's a well-proven tool. Last or not last, but the next one up too, and this one kind of surprises a lot of people because I don't think a lot of people know about it. But to be honest, it's not the best tool for every situation because it is very expensive. I'll try to show like a picture of it with its price. But the next one up is the Combat Trudon by Microtech with its rescue option. So there is a dedicated rescue version or variant of the Combat Trudon and it comes in around $1,000. So it is not cheap by any means. So that's why I don't think it's applicable for every one, but if you can get a good deal on it and you want the OTF side of things, it is 
a venerable option. It has a blunted tip to it. It's very similar to the Ensar, just obviously it's not curved. So it has a very, on one side, a very exaggerated, um, you know, belt cut or strap cutter on the, you know, rear or spine side. And then it has a very aggressive cutting edge on the front side. It's also in blaze orange, which I do really like. That's one thing that I wish the um, Ensar in the Sark had but these guys are unfortunately only in tactical black whereas the uh, combat trudon like rescue is a like blaze orange blade and handle anyways if an otf is what you want or an automatic is what you need then i would look at that one if you have the money for it once again it's very expensive coming in at like a thousand dollars and then lastly is spider co so i'm not quite sure how to put these spider co's into an exact um, order like there's not really one designated model but there are multiple models made by spider co just looking at them uh, right now but all of them have like rescue oriented blades so basically i'll just show a quick you know uh, image of one so they basically have a heavily blunted tip fully serrated blade and um, some of them have texturing on the back but basically they have a heavily blunted blade and a fully serrated blade as well some are assisted some are manual some are automatic um, so realistically the best thing i would say if you're looking at spider co is just like look up spider co rescue knife because they all have like that rescue style blade but they come with different handles different blade steels different um you know kinds of variants and options once again in deployment some are assisted some are manual some are automatic um, so they're really quite versatile spider co makes a lot of different variants of rescue styled knives so if you're looking for something they are probably my last choice on this because once again you don't see things like oxygen tank wrenches you don't see things like um, strap cutters on them so they're very much just that rescue blade but if that's all you need or all you want then they are a very they are a viable option and the one nice thing i will say about spider co's options at least their manual rescue blades they come in at about 120 dollars so if you're looking for a more budget friendly version like they're probably going to be the most budget friendly for rescue knives because even things like the nsar and the sark are about 300 dollars. the raptors are going to be about like this model of raptor is i think around 120 dollars. so then again right around um that spider co range but you are going to see with most of the knife options like once again the microtech combat trudon it's like over a thousand dollars so you know you're going to notice that the knives are going to be a bit more expensive but the uh, spider co uh, versions are not as expensive so these are some of the options i'd recommend i'm going to try to throw in pictures for the ones that i didn't physically have here but hopefully that also explains some of the rationale because as someone who actually does use rescue tools um you know like in real life this is like something that like i was very disappointed when blade hq did like a really half-baked attempt at like a rescue knife buyer's guide because they really did not offer any actual rescue knives when i know like these are just six rescue knives or different variants of rescue knives that pretty fast came to my mind and i'm like these are actually all ones that exist once again some of them i own and so it's worth talking about them it's worth you know sharing them because if you do actually need these if you do actually use rescue knives or want one in your collection for a special occasion you know it's nice to have proper tools to actually take care of situations so anyways that's what you know really struck me and why i wanted to make like a true out and out video going over rescue tools and options because they're really important and very nice and having the right one when you actually need it is honestly can be like a lifesaver truthfully so anyways guys hopefully you enjoyed the video as always god bless and i'm out